Hey guys, welcome back to another critique episode. I'm going to be critiquing your quadricep assignments. Probably everybody's favorite muscle group on the legs. Maybe second to butts. Nothing's going to be as interesting. Maybe feet, actually. Maybe feet will be more interesting. And we're going to close off with feet, so that'll be fun. So let's begin. I'm going to start with Pamela May Green. Okay, Pamela, so I feel like your gesture is fine. You know, they don't. your poses don't look stiff. Proportions look fine. You know, I don't see any major proportional errors. Structurally, it might look a, a little bit flat, but I think some of that is coming from your line quality. Um, it feels very uptight. Like, I feel like you're like flexing your hand or something and you're, you're not, you're not loosened up. Um, so that might just come from a little bit more mileage, a little more experience with the pencil. But everything looks like you're just pressing down really hard and you're, you're, you're not, your strokes aren't flowing very well. And sometimes having a stroke like that that's very uptight makes things just appear flatter and two-dimensional. You know, like if you draw a line like this versus like that, you know, this, these kinds of lines have motion and when you draw a form, like this, that looks flatter than if you draw a form with a with better line quality. It just, for some reason, it carries a little bit more uh, volume to it. And that's what I feel like is a lot of your lines are like this, where it's, they're just very timid. Like you, you put the pencil down, you draw it, you end it, you bring the pencil back up. Use your shoulder, loosen up a little bit, um, but that's, unrelated to anatomy. So as far as accuracy and anatomy, <clears throat> I have a few things that I'm seeing here. I'm going to start with this guy. I think that's Laura, her left leg. The sartorius looks very skinny on both sides, actually. This guy, very, very skinny. This is very skinny, kind of wobbly. Looks like you're drawing really slowly and you got this wobbly line happening because you're drawing so slowly. If you just use your shoulder and, and try to draw like an S curve, your lines will be a little bit cleaner. You know, faster motion, just, you know, you're avoiding all those wiggles from the sh your, your hand shaking as you slowly move down that line. But yeah, it's also just too skinny and it, it, it feels flat. Then in the glutes, looks like this whole area right here, you didn't really define what it is. You just kind of threw in a, a shape, a flat shape. Um, I would define that this is the gluteus medius in here. And let's bring the reference back in actually. And this is the gluteus maximus over here. And then uh, the, the gluteus maximus continues down, but right here we have a little bit of fat that kind of pinches out on top of the gluteus maximus. The gluteus maximus continues through here and attaches to the IT band. And you see right in here, that's the bottom of the IT band, so right there. And so you didn't really define that IT band. And that's very important, especially on a, the side of the leg where we're seeing, you see this flat area right here? That flattening is caused by the IT band pushing in. I'm pretty sure that this out here, this bump on the outside, is the hamstring. It's not the vastus lateralis. I think the vastus lateralis kind of ends just right after the IT band. And then we have tendon of the hamstring and, uh, and then the hamstring coming out. So the vastus lateralis would be just up to here. Maybe I should change color. So the blue will be the hamstring. And you can see this tendon right here. So there are the parallel tendons on the side there, one from the IT band, one from the hamstring coming out from the back. And they're somewhat parallel. They're not actually parallel, and I'll go more into that um, in the hamstring lessons. But yeah, just keep in mind, guys, I think you, you guys aren't differentiating between the two tendons on the, the lateral side of the knee. Right in here, the quad tendon, you, you kind of have this weird shape that's going off to the side. Make sure you're, 
showing a flattened, like a vertical tendon coming up here. Attaching to the rectus femoris. And then even in here, like your rectus femoris, it's like, there's this weird triangle shape that's, I don't know, it's, it, it's kind of a, an extra piece. Here's the muscles I'm seeing. Tensor fascia lata, sartorius, right through there. And then biceps femoris goes in into there. Or not biceps femoris, sorry. Rectus femoris goes in there. And then in here, there's this quad tendon. You can see very clear bump. And see how yours is going diagonally in here? This one is more vertical. Vastus medialis on the side. Vastus lateralis through there. Okay? And kind of a similar thing in here on this side. You're not really showing this quad tendon reaching out vertically, attaching to the rectus femoris, and then the vastus lateralis attaching to the side of it. You're kind of just outlining like rectangular shapes. You're not thinking of them as three-dimensional forms. You know, like this is a form in here attaching to a top plane of the patella. And then there's a front plane to the patella and a side plane. You know, it, these are forms that need to be tracked and they, they, have, they have volume. Um, and I feel like you're just kind of going shape in here for a muscle, shape in here for another muscle, shape in here for another muscle. And there's a, a patella. And then whatever's left in between is like, oh, there's the quad tendon. You got to think of all of these things as forms and track them correctly. Make sure that if a muscle starts here, ends here, it doesn't go like this and then at the very end, the, the tendon kind of has to do a little wiggle thing to connect to the, the point. Make sure the muscle flows from one point to the next point and that it's, there's a gestural element to it. It's not just a flat shape. Like if I delete all this, I mean, look at the shape you, you designed in here for this kind of an ugly shape, you know? I, I, I'm not, I don't like that, the shape of that muscle. It doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have a, a good flow to it. It's kind of symmetrical. Um, and it doesn't look like it's attaching to the patella. It looks like it flows in here and then ends up right there. So it's not going to the right place. Same thing with, with this one. This is maybe a little more attractive. It, 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 it's more accurate to what the rectus femoris actually looks like. But it, again, it looks like it's attaching to the side of the patella. So you're designing all these muscles as just kind of flat outlines and not actually thinking of three-dimensional form. Just because you're adding these cross contour lines doesn't all of a sudden just turn everything into three-dimensional forms. The way you, you draw the shapes has to be based on three-dimensional forms. You can't just add things to a flat shape and then think that it's going to make it 3D all of a sudden. So, you know, if I look at the model here, this whole form right here is a sartorius. It's pretty thick. And she's a very thin person. I wouldn't say she's buff. She doesn't have large muscles and her sartorius is that thick. If you look at someone like Anthony over here, very, very thick sartorius in here. Look at that. Very, very thick sartorius. So it's, it's a long, skinny muscle, but it has form. So don't just draw it as like a little string, especially when it's active. I would say for anatomical studies, just don't worry about the shading. Do shading studies, specific shading studies where you're focused on depicting form with tone. When you're a student, having too many balls to juggle is just too much. You, you kind of get lost and confused and then nothing ends up working out. So pick your battles, focus on something. And then if you want to improve on, on something else, focus on that. Eventually, once you get good at both, you can start kind of connecting things together. And then, you know, eventually after 10 years or so, 
all these things are just second nature and you're doing drawings that have all these elements together and it's amazing, right? But drawing is so complex, you have to break it up. You can't learn everything at once. Thank you everyone who participated. I really appreciate you putting yourself out there, letting me critique you and you know, that helps other students who are watching this to see what you're doing and, and learn from your mistakes. So that, thank you guys for submitting this. Only a few more lessons away from concluding the anatomy course. We're like four years into this. I hope you, I'm, I'm, some of you guys have been here from the very beginning. Thank you. I really appreciate that. You guys are really, you've just stuck around for all these years and you're doing all the assignments. Thank you. All right. Bye guys.